What's up everybody, welcome to Coding with Chaim. In this week's video, we're going to take a look at how to handle what happens when a user leaves a group video chat. So several months ago, I had a video on this channel that went live where I demonstrated how to build a group video chat using Simple Peer. And in that video, one of the things that I did not handle was what happens when one of the peers leaves the call. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to deal with that. As always, if you'd like to follow along, you'll be able to find a link to the starter files down in the description box below. Of course, in this case, the starter files will simply be the final code of the video that we made a few months ago where I actually demonstrate the group video. So th that final code is the starter files for this particular project. And again, the link is down in the description box below. So when you grab that link, um, whether you download it or clone, doesn't really matter. The first thing you want to do is make sure that you're in the root of the actual project and then you're just going to want to run yarn or npmi and then that's going to both install the dependencies of your server side code and then immediately for you, it, you won't have to do this yourself. It'll then move into the client side folder and then go ahead and install the actual uh, dependencies of the client folder and then that'll happen for you automatically. I've already set it up that way so you don't have to do that yourself. As you can see, when we actually go to the server file, which is going to be in the root of the application, you'll see that we already do have an event that says socketed on disconnect. So we somewhat did handle the actual disconnect event back then when I made this video. However, I left out a few very crucial points and we're going to kind of fill in those gaps now. So basically what I'm doing so far is when we have the actual uh, disconnect event, what I'm doing is I'm actually going to my socket to room collection. So you'll see here I actually have two collections, one that is named users, though more correctly, that probably should have been named rooms. I mean, then the other one is basically going to be socket to room. So the idea is that every single time somebody actually joins the chat, we want to basically know which room they're, go they're going into. So any given ID, which room are you into? So as you can imagine, we might have multiple different rooms. I now want to know which socket belongs to which room. So therefore, I kind of have this collection of socket room that for this socket, you'll find, your, you'll find it in this room. And then I can use that room ID to go find the room in my actual user's collection. Because again, the user's collection really is a room's collection. So now what I'm doing is I'm actually getting the room ID by actually going to the socket to room, passing in the socketed ID. So in other words, the socket that is currently disconnecting, go ahead and get me the actual room that this user was currently in. Now let's go ahead and get the room from going to the user's collection. So we get the room ID, we then go to the user's collection at that particular room ID, and then we get the entire room. So effectively the room will be nothing more than an array or like a sort of a list of the all the socket IDs that are connected to that particular room. Now all I do, I'm doing here is I'm basically just doing some simple null check, making sure that of course that this room does exist. It's probably overly defensive, it's probably not necessary, but that being said, the code is already there, so we're just gonna kinda go with it. And then of course, the next thing that I'm doing is I'm just gonna go ahead and say that we're gonna filter out the user from this particular room by simply doing a room that a filter. So in other words, where the ID is not equal to socket.id, the current person who's currently leaving, take him out of the room and then leave the rest of the users in the room. And then of course, we just go back to the same uh, room by using by saying users of room ID is now equal to the new room. So effectively, what we've now done is we've gone ahead and created a new array that's going to have all the current users minus the one that has just left. That new array will then get reassigned to users of room ID. And now as far as the server is concerned, this user no longer exists within this room. And so again, like I said, all this was already handled in the previous code up until now. So now we only have to make one small change as far as the server side of the code is concerned to kind of get this new disconnect event to work properly. Okay, so here what we're doing now is we're pretty much just going to go ahead and say socket of broadcast and emit. And then what this is going to do is it's pretty much going to be sending a message to everyone that is connected minus ourselves. And that's going to be sending an event called user left. And then the actual payload that's going to be getting sent along with this event to the client side is going to be the ID of the person who's currently leaving. So effectively, the server side has already been able to handle the person leaving because the server side is listening out for the disconnect event and then he actually gets the ID of the person who's currently leaving and then we can just kind of handle that. But we now have to go back to the client side application to kind of tell all the other connected peers in the call that someone in their call has left and they now need to go handle that accordingly. And that's what this line on line 46 is currently doing. It's basically saying everyone else is connected. I want you to be aware of the fact that somebody's left and this is the person who's left. You'll know who it is based on their ID. And that's all we need to do for the for the server side code. We can now move on to the client side code. So the next file that's going to be relevant for us to make our changes in is going to be in the client folder under source, under routes. We're going to go to the room.js file, and this is where we are going to be making our client side code changes to get the sort of disconnect event to work properly. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to head on over to our use effect right over here. And then we are going to be creating a new event that this client side code will be listening out for, and that is going to be the user left event that we just kind of sent ourselves from the server to the client. Okay, so let's take a look at the code that we just pasted in. So as you can see, we're setting up an event handler for the user left event, which we are sending ourselves from the server to the client. And of course, this event is receiving the ID of the person who is currently leaving. And so now one thing that I do want to point out before is to kind of start going through this code is if you actually come up here to our sort of start of the component, you'll notice that we actually have two arrays that are dealing with the uh, peers. So one of them here is up here on line 41, we have an array of peers that we're using states for. Then down here on line 44, we have another peers ref, which we're using refs to handle. 
So effectively, if you'll notice, this component actually has two array of, of peers that it actually manages. One of them is specifically for state purposes and one of them is specifically for ref purposes. In other words, what I mean by that is we really have sort of two problems here that this application is kind of trying to solve before the actual disconnect event. And of course, I go into this in a lot more detail in the other video that is linked down in the description box below. That's the video that I actually show how to actually use simple peer to kind of build a simple group video chat. But I'm just going to say this one little point because it's going to be relevant for our actual user left event. One of the problems they're trying to solve is, of course, the actual logic that pertains to having a group video chat and that is all the sort of signaling from one peer to the other peer when another peer joins kind of make sure that it sends its signal to all the other currently connected peers and so on and so forth so for that we're pretty much going to be using the peers referee because it doesn't really pertain to anything that, that relates to ui or visuals it's purely the logic of having a collection of peers currently connected into one call therefore we use that as a as a ref However, we of course also want to make sure that for every connected peer, we also want to display a video tag on screen, right? That's why we actually have to use state because again, since we're writing this in React, if you want to display anything on screen, you make sure that you use state to kind of uh, have your UI be a reflection of your current state. So therefore now, we also have an array of peers that for every single person who's currently connected and therefore we have another person pushed into this peers array on state, we're going to have another video tag displayed on the actual uh, screen. So now what needs to happen is in our user left event, we kind of have to manage both of these arrays again. We have to make sure that we re remove one of the peers from the peers ref array because it's no longer connected in the actual video call. So we have to handle the actual WebRTC logic part of it. But in addition to that, we, have to, we also have to make sure that we actually remove one of these peers out of the actual peers array on state to make sure that the UI also reflects the fact that one of the peers has in fact left. So let me show you this now in code. So if you come back down to this user left event that we've now uh, pasted in, you'll notice that one of the first things I'm doing here is I'm actually going to the peers ref array and I'm trying to find the actual peer that's currently leaving by doing a simple find where peer.id is equal to the ID of the person who's currently left. That gives me this peer object. The peer object will include a peer, the actual connected peer instance, will be get from, which is what we get from the simple peer. And then it actually has a destroy method, which simple peer gives us that allows us to simply destroy and clean up all the connections and all the event handlers that are attached to this very peer. So then the next thing we need to do is, of course, make sure that we take this peer out of the actual peers ref array. So again, so far, all we're dealing with right now is just the actual logic of making sure that we're cleaning up this peer out of the peer phone call. And, and we're basically cleaning up all of its connections and all of its event handlers. We're kind of handling the WebRTC logic part of this. And that's what all this, all this code up until here is basically doing. So again, we're finding the peer, we're destroying the peer, and then we're removing the peer out of the actual array. Since we now get this new array of peers that's going to be equal to all the peers that have currently been connected minus the one that has just left, so that's going to be a perfect time for us to then go back to our actual set peers function, which again, we get from state right up over here, and we're pretty much going to go ahead and say that our new state should be equal to this peers array, which is going to be all the connected users minus the one that has just left, and now what it's going to allow us to do is kind of have the UI display all the tags minus the one of the person who's just left because previously if you wouldn't have done this when somebody leaves yes yeah, sure we might have handled that as far as web rtc is concerned and then you might not you might only actually have three people connected but state isn't yet aware of this react is not yet aware of this and therefore what's going to be happening is you'll have four tags but of course only three when the three of them will actually have connected streams and one of them will just be a black video tag which of course we don't actually want which is why we're basically saying set peers to be equal to the new peers array which is now of course only going to have three elements and therefore it's only going to actually show us three video tags and the one that of the person who's just been left will of course get cleaned up and no longer be displayed within the browser and so that's what all of this code is doing but we're not done yet okay so as it turns out if we just left the code the way that it is right now we would actually see that we do actually have a pretty big bug left in our code and let me demonstrate that right now if you come down to our return statement you'll notice that as we map over this peers array so again this peers array comes from state and pretty much what happens is for every given connected peer that is in this peers array we display a video tag on screen and so, of course, given the fact that this is React, as we map over a collection and we kind of want to render something for each item that is, it, with, that is within a collection, we have to make sure that we provide a key. And you'll notice that one of the things that I'm doing here, which is kind of a big no-no, is I'm actually saying that the key will be equal to an index. And I know that a lot of you already know this, but React recommends that you never use an index as a key. Now, nine times out of 10, this won't actually come and bite you, but this is actually one of those cases where this will actually cause a bit of an issue. Now, let me demonstrate exactly what the problem is, and then I'm gonna kind of walk through the steps of fixing this, and then the actual group video disconnect will be done. So let me show you what I mean. Okay, so as you can see, I've got a group video chat happening here. We've got three people connected. Of course, it's all just myself in this case, but now watch what happens. See, we actually have three tabs open. We've got the tab over here on the left, which is going to be the zero width index. We then have the middle tab, which is going to be the one index. And then we've got the second, the third tab, which is of course going to be the two index. So remember, this is going to be this, what you see on screen right now is re represented by the peers array that is going to be for every connected peer, we have another element in that peers array on state. So therefore, therefore the first P, the first tab is going to be the zero width element and then so on and so forth. Now what watch what happens if I actually try to go ahead and close the sort of zero width tab within this array. 
As you can see, I've now actually lost two peers instead of only losing one. And what's even worse, one of the peers that was lost, it's tag didn't even properly get cleaned up. In fact, it just blacked out. So basically right now, even though technically the disconnect and the leaving of our actual video chat works, as you can plainly see, one of the peers did in fact leave, but it's not really working right. It's actually quite wrong at this point, because again, we've lost two peers and one of them, his tag kind of just went black, which is of course not at all what we kind of want. This isn't, this wouldn't be a great user experience whatsoever. So the way to fix this right now would be instead of actually having the index as a key, we're going to have to use a peer ID as a key. Okay. So as I've said, the way to fix this is to make sure that we no longer use the actual key as, or the index as a key. We now want to make sure that we're going to use something that's more unique and not something that's random. So therefore what we're going to do is we're going to actually set up that every single peer that is connected that we have in state, instead of it just being a simple peer object, we're also going to make sure that we actually give it an ID. So just like we actually did that for the actual peers ref, the peers ref, um, the peers ref array, as you will notice, actually has not only the actual peer object but also has a peer id which is equal to the user id we're not going to go ahead and do the same thing for the actual peers that we have on state and then therefore as we loop over that peers array within our return statement instead of using the index as a key we're going to get to use that id as a key and then everything should work exactly as we expect it to so let's start writing that code now Okay, so the first place that we need to make this change now is of course going to be here at the top of our user effect when somebody when you know when somebody joins the actual uh, room what we're then going to do is we're going to get back an event that's going to give us all the users and this is where we pretty much uh, for, e for each over the users array that we're getting back so this is pretty much just going to be an array of IDs that the server is sending us back again all of this is covered in more detail in the other video. And then as we kind of loop over this user, user array, we pretty much build up our peers ref object, our peers ref array by kind of pushing in this object that has the peer ID, which is equal to this user ID. And then of course the actual peer object. So now the only thing we're gonna do is here, instead of just pushing into the peers array that we have on state, just the actual peer object, we're simply gonna go ahead and push in an object as well. One of which will, uh, it's gonna be a, an object that has two keys. One of, key, one of these keys will be of course the user ID and then the other one will be the actual peer object. So now the next place that we're going to want to go and handle this will be in the user joined event. So once again here, the user joined event will pr pretty much, it's going to be receiving this payload. It then goes ahead and creates a new peer. It'll then take this peer object and return it to the actual peers or push it into the peers ref array with the sort of same structure. It'll have a peer ID and then the actual simple peer object. So now all we're doing is instead of simply pushing in just the actual peer object directly into the peers array, we're now going to go ahead and build up this peer OBJ, which will of course include the two keys, one of which will be the actual simple peer object. And then of course the peer ID, and now we can go ahead and push this new peer object into the uh, already existing peers array that we have on state. So at this point, the peers array will no longer just be an array of peers. It's going to be an array of objects, which is going to have the key that's going to be the peer. And then of course the actual peer or user ID. Okay, finally, we come down to our JSX, to our return statement. Let's just make the one small change we need to make down here, which is of course going to be to simply uh, say that instead of actually using the index as a key, we're not going to be using the peer ID as a key. And then of course, when we're passing the actual peer object down to the video, instead of simply being able to take this peer object and just pass it down to the video component, we now simply need to index into this object and actually grab the key that is called peer that is now going to represent the actual simple peer object that we're trying to send down to the video tag. And now once this is done, we now will pretty much have a working uh, group group chat to disconnect to work in sort of all scenarios even when I actually go ahead and close down the zero with index tab and it's all going to work exactly as expected so let me demonstrate that now okay so as you can see I now have three people connected in this chat let me go ahead and close down the zero with tab and as you can see the person who I've just closed down as tab has left completely no problems we've now left with exactly two peers and we don't have any sort of tags that have been blacked out and it's all working exactly as expected well, that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you next week in another video. Perfect.